Don't you hate when you get a fingerprint on the screen? Well, hopefully this video will make you appreciate or at least take a little bit look harder at what's on the screen before you go through and you wipe it off. So this is going to focus on fingerprints, but the same applies to palm prints and footprints. The dermal papillae lie atop the dermal ridges, and that's what we're looking at when we look at a natural fingerprint. They're elevated overlying the epidermis into dermal ridges. They are sweat films because of sweat pores, and they're actually genetically determined. So we're going to be looking at a couple of the key uh, different types. There's three main classifications, arches, loops, and whorls. We'll be able to identify these in greater detail. Just for those thinking about getting a tattoo, since we're talking about skin, uh, the dermis is the receptive site for the pigment of tattoos. So a little bit lower or deeper down, we're focusing a little bit more on how this dermal layer impacts the shape or the ridges that occur on the surface. So starting with fingerprints, uh, some of the basics. No two people have been found with the exact same fingerprint pattern. The fingerprint pattern will remain unchanged for the life of the individual. However, the print itself may change due to permanent scars or skin diseases or damage. You can see here a little bit of a pie graph. 55% typically have loops, 23 whorls, 12% arches, and 10% composites. And we're going to investigate each one of these in a little bit more detail. Just to go back, if you're interested in learning more about fingerprints, I included a couple of resources down here and some slideshows to take a look at. So continuing on, the three major fingerprint classes are arches, loops, and whorls. Each group is divided into smaller groups as seen in the list below. So within arches, we have what's called a plain arch, a tented arch, loops, we have something called a radial and an ulnar loop, and whorls, we have different types. And I'm going to show you some examples of these and so you can be able to identify what your own fingerprints are. So starting with the most basic one, the arches. This is the St. Louis Gateway Arch. You can think of that. Arches are the simplest type of fingerprints, and they're formed by ridges on either side of the print and exit the other. You see here a plain arch, just kind of a little bit of a rise here. Ridges enter one side and exit the other side. Tented arch is similar to plain arch, but it has a spike in the center, a little bit more pronounced here. So both of these are arches. These would be considered plain arches. These would be tented arches. Loops is where it gets a little more confusing. Loops must have one delta and one or more ridges that enter or leave the same side. These patterns are named for the position related to the radius in the ulnar bones. The bone the loop is opening is facing towards. So the bone the loop opening is facing towards is the bone it gets the name. So let's at some examples here. So we have our left hand, we have our right hand. It's important to remember that wherever your thumb is, this portion here, this bone, is the radius. On the other side here is the ulna. And same goes for left and right hand. You can see here's the thumb, and here's the radius, the thicker bone, and the ulna is the thinner bone here. So when we have a print here, a loop made, notice that the loops, the openings are pointing this way. Well, if this was made with a left hand, okay, if we're on this hand and the loops are pointing this way, we're pointing towards the radius. This would be a radial loop. But if this same print was made with the left hand, okay, it would be pointing this way and be pointing actually to the ulna. The ulnar loop would be the proper term for this. And same thing goes here. If this was made with the left hand, it would be pointing to the, the ulnar loop. If it was uh, made with the right hand, it would be pointing to the radial loop. The delta that's mentioned are these small regions here. From a little delta, a little triangle, we can see that evident right here. So with loops, it's very important to realize or identify if it was made with the left hand or if it was made with the right hand. Continuing on to whorls. So whorls have, have at least one ridge that makes or tends to make a complete circuit. They also have at least two deltas. If a print has more than two deltas, it's likely accidental. Uh, so we see here, we see our whorl. A plain whorl, we have a center pocket whorl. So what we're doing is we're drawing a line here between the two deltas in the plain and central pocket whorls. If some of the curved ridges touch the line, you see here, it's considered a plane whorl. If none of them touch the center line, we would call a central pocket whorl. Again, this is just getting into a little bit more deeper into the classification of whorls. There's both a plane and a central pocket. Whorls part two are actually composites. So we have something called a double loop whorl. Here's our delta, here's another delta. A double loop whorls are comprised of two loops combined into one print. This is called a double loop. Mention the composite. We have a picture here of a dog and kind of a bird, kind of a merger of two. That's what we see kind of here with an accidental whorl sometimes. It contains two or more patterns. 
and not included um, and not including the plain arch, or does not clearly fall under any of the other categories. It's kind of somewhat considered like the miscellaneous categories, accidental whirl, uh, this composite, it's kind of a combination of a few different things. So identify each fingerprint pattern. Now you'll notice with each fingerprint, A, B, C, D, and E, I also include what hand it was made from. That's very important if we're looking at identifying, if we look back, we want to make sure if we're identifying something as a loop, we're identifying the left or the right hand as an ulnar or a radial loop based on what direction the openings are pointed. If it's going back to the very beginning, if it's an arch, it doesn't matter left or right hand. Loops, it does make a difference. And whirls, it does not make a difference. So if you need a chance to just take a look at this, you can pause the video at this point and see if you can identify these various fingerprints. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video. I want to reveal the answers to you. Hopefully you've gone through and been able to write down some of these. Uh, and here are the answers to the uh, various fingerprints here. Hopefully this is helpful, identifying fingerprints here on the slides that I have. And also makes you look at your fingers that you're very familiar with working with a little bit better and develop a better understanding of your own body.